Greetings, fair listeners, and thank you for joining me once again as we celebrate stories and storytelling in all their forms and the bards and artists who bring them all to life. I am the Tale Collector and your host, Erica Adams. Sometime last year, I was on the phone with my father, who lives in Illinois. At one point, our conversation turned to the ringtones he has on his phone for different callers. It was fun hearing what kind of tunes would ring out whenever family members like my sister, my brother, and my stepmother called him. But I felt very flattered when he told me that, upon hearing my Amethystium episode, he had programmed a song by that artist as a ringtone for general callers. When I asked him what song he had for whenever I called him, the answer he gave me brought back a lot of memories. The carefree days of Radio Disney, with their top 30 countdown every Sunday night, the boy in middle school who shared a mutual interest in them, and who was the first to ask if I'd be his girlfriend. And, on a mall trip with my dad no less, the sheer elation I felt coming upon their second album completely by chance. Remember, these were the days when my access to internet was far more limited. When I visited him again later, the subject came up again, and I asked him why he chose that song. He replied that he just as fondly remembered, when I was a kid, how excited I was about their music and how I'd go on and on about them. Hopefully I didn't totally talk his ear off back then, at least no more than usual, though I've still listened to these guys on and off again over the years. Hearing them again with this conversation in mind really made me feel a sense of nostalgia that I haven't had in a good while. Thanks, Dad. Let's take a trip down memory lane with Eiffel 65, performing from 1998 to 2005, and again from 2010 to the present, and recommended for listeners 10 and up. Consisting of three members, Jeffrey J., Maurizio Lobina, and Gabri Ponte, Eiffel 65 hails from Turin, Italy. If you grew up during the 90s like I did, even if you don't know them by name, you'll more than likely know their best-known song, Blue Dabba Dee. Upon first hearing them, I mistakenly assumed that they were from France due to their band name, thinking that they had, for some reason, named themselves after the Eiffel Tower in Paris. I wonder if I'm the only one who thought that. And I couldn't even begin to guess the reasoning behind 65. But the name's true conception is actually kind of a funny story. Having been unable to decide on a name amongst themselves, the three guys simply gathered together words that they liked and put them into an Excel database. The program randomly chose the word Eiffel. The 65 part, however, was even more random. Their producer had been writing a phone number on a piece of paper at the exact time the label copy of Blue was on his desk. Without thinking, he wrote two of those digits, 6 and 5, on the label copy. And then when the graphic artist got it, he assumed the number 65 was part of the name and put it at the end of Eiffel. And the rest, as they say, is history. The more I listened to the Europop slash Eurodance of Eiffel 65 during my early teen years, the more I realized there was something about their voices that I couldn't quite put my finger on. They didn't sound thoroughly computerized, but they didn't sound quite natural either. I enjoyed the music for many years more, albeit feeling a bit puzzled each time, before I finally learned the source. Autotune. Heavily influenced by electronic artists like Daft Punk, the extensive use of this tool is the most prominent feature of Eiffel 65's vocal sound. Released in 1999, Blue was in fact one of the earliest songs to use and popularize it. For those unfamiliar, Autotune is an audio processor used to alter vocal and instrumental pitches in music, sometimes resulting in a more digitalized or robotic sound, whether for creative effect or to simply disguise or correct any off-key inaccuracies. This latter function, unfortunately, is the underlying reason behind the negative reputation the tool has garnered over the years, as it's accused of making it easier for, quote, bad singers to make more music with less skill. However, Eiffel 65 has used it in a way that I think meshes very well with their instrumental style. Accompanying the rave-like synthesizers, the rapid tempo and precise beats of the percussion gives much of their music, especially the songs Taylor made for the dance floor, a very machine-like feel. Clockwork, if you will whether it lightens the step or pounds the pulse. And speaking of technology, among the most common themes in their songs, especially their earlier ones, is science, whether real science or science fiction. I can honestly think of no adjective more appropriate here than nerdy, sometimes in fun ways, sometimes in abstract ways, but seldom without a sense of rumination. And as a self-proclaimed nerd, I am ever all for that. The song, My Console, is a love letter to video games and the loyal fans who play them a fond recollection of the original PlayStation and some of its most iconic titles. Another race talks about, what else? Aliens, and how they are said to live invisibly among humans in a manner reminiscent of films like They Live or Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And I have to say, 
The weird little notes that pop up in between the chorus lyrics are a really nice touch, as if the creatures of the song are being shown to the listener through the music itself, rather than told only through the words. Back in Time explores the more surreal experiences of time travel, reminding me a bit of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, with the recklessly ambitious time traveler and his adventures in temporal limbo. And People of Tomorrow feels like a call to action of sorts, both encouraging the progress of the younger generations and prophesizing how they will change the world with the strengths and wonders of the technology they are sure to create. Now these songs may certainly be less straightforward than I give credit for, with other meanings that I simply don't see. More to the point, this isn't to say these guys' music is superficial, nor is it incapable of making one think. While the lyrics themselves may not always be as poetic or uncanny as, say, those of Owl City, whatever the songs may lack in profound topics or creative lines, they make up for in fresh metaphors. And by fresh metaphors, I mean those that are not utilized either often, if at all, in this particular genre, or in ways that just boil down to parties and sex. In fact, I'm glad that many Eiffel 65 songs don't feature romantic love as a subject, choosing instead, more than once, to focus on the emotions and ideas of the individual mind, some more interpretable than others. And again, these are just my own thoughts. Living in a bubble warns of the dangers of indulging too much in dreams, as otherwise, real life will eventually come crashing down on the dreamer. And Morning Time speaks to me of how death might feel like a new adventure to one dying of natural causes. But the messages of Johnny Gray and Elephants in Amsterdam if they exist, are beyond me. To make another Owl City comparison, the latter's particularly weird lyrics do sound like the kind Adam Young would conjure up, don't you think? This group has long since been deemed a one-hit wonder, and the incredibly dated-looking CGI in their hit song's music video hasn't helped to change that. But in my opinion, a one-hit wonder just means that people simply best remember that one song they made. That doesn't mean that every other song of theirs is bad. If nothing else, Eiffel 65 is an electronic nostalgia trip for both fans of dance and those who just like to dance. Heck, maybe in another few decades or so, my generation will recognize their timelessness and be reminiscing about them, and artists like them, the way our parents and grandparents do now about Frank Sinatra, the Beatles, and the like. Who knows? Gather around next time for another tale you may have forgotten or have never heard before. Until then, listeners, may inspiration always find you. <laughs>